Hello friends and welcome to edupediaworld.com, your destination to online education. Friends, today we are going to start with the second topic of language of chemistry, which is valency. So in this session, we'll be discussing four subtopics. First is what is valency. Then we'll be learning how to write the formula of compound. We'll also discuss some names of molecular and ionic compounds. And we'll be understanding to calculate the valency of an element from the formula. So let's start the session and understand the topics one by one. First is what is valency. Valency. Friends, if you have seen my previous sections about the valence electron, it is nothing but the electron present in the outermost shell of an atom of an element. For example, carbon have four valence electrons. Hydrogen have one electron. So, if you see, carbon can combine with four hydrogen to form a methane compound. So, now if you define the valency, it is nothing but the capacity of an atom of an element to form chemical bond is known as its valency, right? As I have just given you the example of methane, the valency of element is also known as valence of the element or combining capacity of an element. You can also say that the valency of an element is decided by the number of valence electrons. Now if we talk about the valence electrons according to the metals and non-metals. Let's take the valency of metals. We'll be writing as the number of valence electrons present in the outermost shell. That is in an atom. If you talk about non metals, we write 8 minus number of valence electron in an atom of its element. Right. So there is a one exception to this rule that that is the valency of hydrogen. The valency of hydrogen is equal to the number of the valence electron, which is one. Though the hydrogen is non-metal element, it is taken as a standard element. So now we can say that. The valency of element or of a radical is number of hydrogen atom that will combine with or displace one atom that element or radical. Though in this definition we have termed that they combine or they displace. So we take, there are two types of valency. First is electrovalent 
that is electrovalency and second is covalency in electrovalency the number of electron lost or gained by one atom of an element to achieve the nearest inert gas electron configuration is known and uh, as its electrovalency that is if i write to achieve inert gas configuration that is to achieve eight the numbers of electron is either gained from the another atom of the element or loose or you can say lost to form the octet rule this we call is octet rule this is basically electrovalency in contrast covalency is the number of electrons shared by one atom of an element to achieve the nearest inert gas electron configuration is known as covalency here the electrons are shared here it is gained or lost so friends let's understand now the definition it is the valency of an element is the combining capacity of an atom or ion or we can also say that the valency of an element is either equal to the number of valence electron in its atom or equal to the number of electron required to complete eight electrons in the valence shell so now friends let's understand how to write the formula like i have written the steps first is the write the symbol side by side using one with the positive valency first second is write the valency of each atom on the top of its symbol third divide the valency numbers by their highest common factor if any to get the symbol ratio ignore the positive or negative symbol of the ion then we have to entertain the valencies of the ions and we have to rewrite after interchanging the valency numbers to lower right of the radicals if the radical is a group of atoms and receives a valency number more than one enclose it within the braces let's understand these steps one by one by the example i take the example of uh, hydrogen sulfide so what is the first step first step is the hydrogen sulfide compound made of hydrogen h and sulfur s so first we have to write the symbols of hydrogen and sulfur now second step the valency of hydrogen is 1 right here 1 and what about the sulfur it's 2 so now what we have to do in third we have to criss cross this call is criss cross method or we also say this cross over valencies so now we have h2s1 or we can also write h2s so this is a final compound after criss cross so now we cross over the valencies of h and s so with h we write the valency of s which is 2 as subscripts 
so that it becomes H2 and with S atom we write the valency of hydrogen which is 1 as a subscript so that it becomes S1. Now joining together S2, H2 and S1 the formula of H hydrogen sulfide becomes H2S. This is because we do not write the subscript of 1 with the 1 atom of the formula. I hope you have understood the crisscross over and how to write the formula. Let's take an, another example to make it more clear. Now I'll take the example of carbon. Let's take an example of carbon dioxide. First we have to write the symbol carbon and oxygen. What are the second? We have to write the valencies. Now we have to write the valencies here. Carbon have four and oxygen have two. Third, we have to quiz crossover. So this becomes C2O4. Now fifth, we have to divide it by the HCF of these two subscripts. So it comes up to be CO2, right? So when we cross over the valency of C and O, we get the formula C2O2, O4. This formula containing two carbon atom, four oxygen atom having common factor of 2. So dividing this formula by the common factor 2 we get the simplest formula CO2. So the formula of carbon dioxide is CO2. Right? So now let's understand the next topic that is the names. When we talk about the valencies we also talk about the variable valencies. We talk about the valencies of metals. We talk, so we talk about the valencies of two non-metals one element and oxygen. If we talk about metals and non-metals, what names we prefer or we have the rules that the when we talk about the metals and non-metals, the metal is written first and then non-metal with the suffix ide. For example, if it's calcium nitride, calcium is a metal then we have to write a non-metal that is nitrogen. So it the compound becomes calcium nitride with IDE. When we talk about two metals, the pre we prefix with tri, tetra and pentra, etc. which are added to it. Then when we talk about two elements and oxygen, oxygen is represented by the end of the formate. That is if the number of oxygen is 3, we write ATE at the end. If it's 2, we write ITE and if it's less than 2, we write hypo and if there is more than 3, we write PER. For example, for 3 oxygen, we write sodium chlorate. For 2 oxygen, we write sodium chloride, ITE. When there is less than 2, we write sodium hypochlorite, T hypo and if we talk about more than 3 oxygen in any compound we write PER that is sodium perchlorate and if an element exhibits two different positive valencies then the lower valency uses the OUS and for the higher valency we use suffix IC. Let's take an example like we have iron, copper, mercury, gold, tin, lead. We have two kinds of variable valencies out here. For the higher one we write IC and for lower we write OUS like iron we have ferrous and ferric, copper, cuprous and cupric, mercury, mercurous and mercuric, gold, aurus and auric, tin, stannous and stannic, lead, plumbus and plumbic. Let's see some more monovalent, divalent, trivalent, electropositive and electronegative ions. We also call them radicals. We have certain names. We can take a look on this image. So now we have learned how to name the certain formulas. We know how to write the formula. Now let's Calculate the valency of element if we don't know the valency of if we
to know the valency of the particular element in the particular formula. Let's understand one by one. So let's write the procedure to find the valency. First step, we have to write the given formula. Write the given formula. For example, if I take example of NO2, right? I write the formula. Then we have to interchange the subscript and write them superscript. Let's write down. Let's interchange the subscript and write on the superscript. Right? Like N two O one. Now we have to take as valency ox of oxygen as two, and therefore multiply both the subscript by two. That is, we have to write the valency of oxygen, which is taken as two therefore we have to multiply both the superscript by two so here we get n2 into 2 o 1 into 2 now the result gives the valency of element valency of element that is N4 O2 thus the valency of nitrogen is 4 All right I hope you have gone to the steps you can also try by the uh, by yourself. So now I end up with the session and give you some small activity so that you can also learn and understand the topic. You just have to work out the chemical formula of water and ammonia. In second question you have if the magnesium salt of an anion X has formula Mg3 x2 what is the valency of x and what would be the formula of ammonium salt of x so in next session we'll be meeting with chemical equations thank you